Ancient history rarely is established on the grounds that we prefer in ancient historiography. We would like early and eyewitness accounts. Everybody likes early eyewitness accounts. Not all eyewitness accounts are early. So we want an eyewitness account told as close to the data as possible. Now, we don't have that for a good part of the ancient world. I mean, Livy, to use one example, Roman historian, he talks about things that happened in the founding of Rome hundreds of years before his earliest sources. Our earliest sources for Alexander are 300 years later, and the best sources for Alexander are plus four and a quarter to plus 450. So when people say the Gospels are hopelessly prejudiced and we can't get anything out of them beginning at plus 40, 40 years after Jesus, it's just like, you know, let's just apply some principles here and talk about history. And yes, early eyewitness evidence can be wrong. But so what would you rather have? Late non-eyewitness evidence? I mean, you know, you can only take your best evidence, even in court cases today. Now, here's how we get to early and eyewitness evidence for the appearances of Jesus. Paul is a witness that skeptics allow, and they will allow about half of Paul's books as authentic. Interestingly enough, they will allow the main books that Christians want to use, and two of the ones they will always allow, 1 Corinthians and Galatians are two. In those books, Galatians, for example, Paul says he, he became a Christian, Galatians 1.16 as the book starts. He says, I didn't go up to Jerusalem right away. I went, I went out to be alone with the Lord for three years, and then I went up to Jerusalem. Now, we can do the math on this because the skeptics do it too. And that appearance to, to Jerusalem by Paul takes place about three years after the cross. That's when most New Testament scholars place it. So if you place the cross at 30 AD, that trip to Jerusalem is about 33. Paul spends 15 days with two apostles, i.e. eyewitnesses. Peter, James, the brother of Jesus. The three of them are together, and the key to the book of, of Galatians is the nature of the gospel. So they're discussing, among other things, the gospel for 15 days. If I were Paul, my first question would be, Peter, I'll tell you what you saw. I mean, you know, no offense, but you denied him three times. And James, I mean, I know you're a spiritual guy and everything, and you're the pastor of this church of Jerusalem, but no offense. I was a persecutor, I understand. But I hear you didn't even believe when your brother was walking around. What got you guys here? And I think they would, it, you can't imagine them being there for 15 days and not talking about the resurrection. It's the key to the Christian faith. Now, Bart Ehrman, who's a very well-known skeptic, says that, he says, Paul got this material just a very few years after the cross. He says, but he said, think about this. This is Bart Ehrman, best known skeptic in America, non-Christian. He says, Paul got to interview Peter and James. I'd like to interview Peter and James. And then he says, this is as close to eyewitness testimony as we, as we can get. It's very close to eyewitness testimony. Three years after the cross from guys who believed they saw the risen Jesus, how do you know? Well, they teach that, and then they were willing to die for it. Now you say, well, I'm so tired of that. A lot of people are willing to die today. A lot of people, yes, right. But today, people are willing to die for those guys' testimony, or Muhammad's testimony, or you know somebody else's Buddha, what they believe would be Buddha's testimony. It has to only transform your life enough that you're willing to die for that message. But you don't know if it's true or false. But the disciples were in a place to know if it was true or false, and they were willing to die for it. So the key here is they were willing to die for a message for which they were in a position to know if it were true or false, right or wrong. Fourteen years later, Galatians 2, Paul goes up there again. And Galatians 2, 2, Paul says, I set before them the gospel I was preaching to see if I was running or had run a vein. He's saying, guys, are we all on the same page? And just a few verses later, these five words in English, they added nothing to me. They added nothing to me. And then just a few verses later, they laid the right hand of fellowship on Paul and Barnabas. So they all agreed on the nature of the gospel. The resurrection is an indispensable portion of it. Nobody believes that it's not. Paul goes there, checks it out, 
to me, the best way to get early eyewitnesses are these talks that Paul had right after the cross with Peter, with James, the brother of Jesus, of course, himself, and Galatians 2, John is there. How far would you go to hear these four guys speak? These are the four best known, most influential Christians. They're all there talking about the nature of the gospel. That's how we know. 1 Corinthians 15, 11, Paul says they're preaching the same message I am. Go ask them if you don't believe me. They'll tell you the same thing. So it's that togetherness from the early eyewitnesses that makes the resurrection faith so credible, the, appearance, you know, the appearances.